Hello, good day, my glorious families. I welcome you to today's chapter of the day. So today's chapter is in the book of Job, chapter nineteen. Remember where we like, where, I, where, where we ended the last time, and I told you that Job actually replied, "Um, be that," because in chapter eighteen, the previous chapter, be that speaks, and he said, "God punishes the wicked." So indirectly he's trying to say whatever job is going through is because job is a wicked man or job has offended god so these are all the summaries of what the friends are just saying they're just kind of trying to blame him even though job was saying ah, i'm righteous i'm righteous i don't think i did anything wrong i'm sure I'm, i've been very very you know very very careful in order not to offend god but still they had a different opinion concerning what is going on and that's why job referred to them as <laughs> miserable comforters so he said, I know that my Redeemer lives. This particular one is what I want us to hold on to. And I know my Redeemer lives. I know my Redeemer lives. So there is one thing is we should just settle on that. That I know my Redeemer lives. So once you acknowledge that God is always by your side, at least that's enough to carry you through. Okay, so now let's read. How long will you torment me and break me in pieces with words? So this time he's asking his friends, you all have been talking, talking. How long are you going to keep talking? Because your talk has not helped. It is only a torment. Somebody put something on internet, um, Okay, the lady talked about, I, I saw that video briefly earlier today. The lady was talking about her experience that um, she said she finally got a divorce letter signed. You know, she said, oh, today I finally got my divorce letter signed. And then she said she couldn't, that she felt at peace. That ever since she had not been at peace, but now that the divorce letter is signed, she felt, wow, freedom at last. And then she felt at peace. Guess what? When I check the comment section, come and see the way people were just... Oh, goodness. Like, people can judge. That person judging did not even say what, you know, what caused your divorce. You know, something like that. Because people divorce for so many reasons. You don't know if the husband has been abusive, like, beating the hell out of her. Even though many people believe that they've been beating you before the marriage. Yes. Some of them have been... They've been beating them before they even got into the marriage. So if you can settle for that, that means you're ready to endure. But what if they can't copy, copy anymore? Let's not just write them off. Let's let's stop all this, you know, judging people before we even know their stories. Even when you know their stories, don't still judge them. Because sometimes it is not as, it's, as it seems. You may think, oh, I will do better. But you will not be able to do better. So let's be careful. So it's, it was asking, so how long will they keep commenting? Because they, are not, they don't have good words to say. Okay, so what I wanted to bring out of that story was that somebody in the comment section now said, Listen to what she's saying. This is not the time to point fingers or try to tell her what she should have done or what she shouldn't do, even do. This is the time she needs encouragement to carry through this process. Agree or not, she already divorced. And she the paper has been signed. Officially, she's a divorcee. Now she's trying to put her pieces together. And the best thing you could tell her was, you know, castigating already. Like, oh, God does not like divorce. And I love what, what somebody said. That person said, yes, God does not like divorce. And at the same time, God does not um, does not hate the divorcee. The fact that you have divorced, God, do God does not like that action. But God does not hate us. Whoever has done it, God is not hating on them. It is the action that God does not like. But that does not mean if the if the marriage is abusive, the person should die there. You should let them go. Let them leave. Though the Bible, um, you know, approve of separation. And it has been said that the woman should not marry again. So that's left to the woman. But let's not be the judge, please. So anyway, let's read on. Say, these ten times you have cast reproach upon me. Are you not ashamed to wrong me? Yes. Are you not ashamed to wrong me, to make me offend, to make me to be offended? And even if it is true that I have heard, my error remains with me. So even if it's true that he has committed sin, he said, my error remains with me. This is exactly what I just narrated. Stop judging people because especially if that thing had never happened to you, all of his friends are telling him that he's overreacting. Why is it this? Why is this that? But they have never experienced what he experienced. In fact, ever since that time, no man had ever experienced what Job experienced. The worst I've ever seen is the first problem 
that was inflicted on him. But the second terror of him being inflicted with all sorts of sicknesses and boils on his skin, no, I've never seen that before. So whatever situation you have never been, do not judge that person. And if you have ever done that, ever been the judge, please ask for forgiveness today. So he said, and even if it is true that I've heard, my error remains with me. If, I, if indeed you magnify yourselves against me and make my humiliation an argument against me, know then that God has put me in the wrong and closed his net around me. I reject it all. Even when I cry, he said, even when he cries, I'm not going to say it that way. Even when he cries, violence, I am not. <laughs> even when he cries, violence, like so much, like there is violence here. Nobody is hearing him. He said he is not answered. Mm. He said he called aloud, but there is no justice. He has walled up his way to so that he cannot pass. He said, and, he's, and he has set darkness upon his path. That God has set darkness upon his path. And he also said he has stripped his glory from him and taken the crown from his head. He said he breaks him down on every side and is gone. He has uprooted his hope like a tree. He has kindled his wrath against He said God has kindled his wrath against him and counts him as he as his adversary, his troops come on together. They have thrown up siege works against him, not me, <laughs> and they camp around his tent. He has put his family far from him, and his acquaintances are wo are wholly estranged from him. And relatives and your friends, and relatives and his friends have failed him. The guests in his house have forgotten him. His servant girls count him as a stranger. He has become an alien in his eyes. He called to my servant. I call, I called, he said he called to his servant, but he gives him no answer. He must, he said, I must myself plead with him. My breath, he said his breath is repulsive to his wife. And he said, I am lonesome to my own family. Even young children despise him. When he rises, they talk against him, and all intimate intimate friends ab abhor him. And those whom he loved have turned against him. He said, my bones cling to my skin and to my flesh, and I have escaped by the skin of my teeth. Have pity on me. Put, have pity on me. Have pity on me. Oh, you friends. Oh, Jesus Christ, I feel for him. He said, for the hand of God has touched him. Why do you, like God, pursue me, never satisfied with my flesh? Oh, thou my words were written down. Oh, that, oh, that they were inscribed in a book. Oh, that we, that with an iron pen and with lead they were engraved on a rock forever. For I know, <coughs> now this is where I love my most. Chapter twenty-five. Where is my pen? For I, I mean, verse twenty-five. For I know. That my redeemer lives, and that at the last he will stand upon the head. And he said, then verse 26. And after my skin, excuse me, say after his skin has been thus destroyed, then in his flesh he shall see God, whom I whom I shall see on my knees. Whom I shall see on my knees. I'm trying to look for where I am because I always love to, I always love to, you know, to trace it. Mm. Whom I shall see on my side. Okay. Then in my flesh, I shall see God. Whom I shall see on my side. And my eyes shall behold and not man. My heart faints within me. If you say how we, we persecute him. And the root of the matter is found in him. He be afraid of his sword. For wrath brings the punishment of the sword, so that you may be, you may know there is a judgment. Mm. These are powerful words. Some of them are too strong. I don't want to put them in my reading like me. What? <laughs> Job, you are a strong man. Let me say you were a strong man. 
do waste for man. Nobody ever wished. I don't think there's anyone. Has anyone ever given his own child joke? I don't think so. But some people might do because I've seen Delilah. Yes, I've seen Delilah as a name here in US. Thank you for watching. Oh, thank you for listening. Is there anything that strike your mind? I have a lot that strike my mind. But it's okay. God bless you for listening. I say thank you so much. I'll see you all again in my next video. Bye-bye. Ciao, ciao. We had a glorious generation.